Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Rideshare Hub. I'm Jacob Letman, and like Slim Shady, I'm back again, baby, for round two. I was on the channel last week, and uh, nobody really hated me, so I'm back. All right, a little bit about me if you didn't catch me last time. I've been driving for Lyft for about two and a half years now. I've given over 1,700 rides. I started driving with Lyft because it allows me to keep my schedule flexible so that I can pursue my passion, which is acting. So I can make money, keep my schedule flexible, go to auditions and acting jobs. Life is good. All right. Hey, before we get into today's topic, make sure if you got something to say, comment below, like this video, share it with your friends and family, other rideshare drivers, and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you get alerts when we have new and fresh content for you. All right, today's topic, my favorite, what it's all about, five ways that you can earn more money while driving with Lyft, right? That's what it's all about. We wanna make the most money with the least amount of time. All right, so let's get right into this thing. Number one, sell drugs to your passengers. Easy one, you can sell drugs on the side. Nah, I'm kidding, definitely don't do that. Okay, just to be clear, no, teasing, don't, don't sell drugs to your passengers. All right, for real though, number one, hit your weekly bonuses. So ever since I started driving with Lyft, honestly, the bonus structure has changed more times than I can keep track of. But as of now, each week, I will get an email with my bonus offer for the next week of driving. And a week of driving is Monday morning, to Sunday night. So for example, this week my bonus offer is for 72 rides, if I hit that number, I will receive a $70 bonus. Now, in order to hit that, I highly recommend that you create a schedule. So, of all the rides I've given, I've done the math, and it boils down to this, you can average about two rides an hour. Two rides an hour. So. To hit my bonus, that means I know I need to schedule at least 36 hours of drive time. And then once you have that schedule, it's up to you to hold yourself accountable and hit that number so you can get your bonus and make more money for your time. Great, so that's number one. All right, number two is know your area. And what I mean by this is the demographics, type of people that live in certain areas within where you live. So. Right now I live in Phoenix and I live on the West End and all the money is hanging out in Scottsdale. There are more people with more money that live in Scottsdale who are used to going out and spending a lot of money and tipping more at restaurants and it's just part of the culture there. So I try to spend as much time as possible driving in Scottsdale opposed to other parts of the valley. Now as we all know we get pulled all over the place but it's just good to know where the money is and lives. In Orange County, I lived in Newport Beach, and fortunately, in Southern California, tipping was just kind of part of the culture, much less so here in Phoenix. Even so, out in Orange County, I would still try and drive in Corona Del Mar, which is where the uber wealthy lived, um, and also in the LA area, like up in Beverly Hills, Anyway, just know your demographics, who has money, those people will tend to tip more. Number three, customer satisfaction. I think this is huge because this accounts for everybody you give a ride to, right? You're just trying to create an excellent experience for every passenger. So some easy, easy things that you can do. One, keep your car clean. Can't tell you how many passengers I've given rides to that get in and they're like, Oh my gosh, your car is so clean. I love it so much. I was with this other guy driving and he smelled like bacon and Old Spice and his car was hairy. So that's an easy one. Keep your car clean. Um, how I handle talking to people or letting them do their own thing is basically like this. Passenger gets in, have a lot of energy, smile. And I'm like, hey, how's it going? Are you having a good day so far? Anything exciting going on today? Did you catch the game from last night? Some small talk stuff to uh, see if they're receptive and want to spark up a conversation. If not, that's totally cool. Then I just let them hang out in the back seat and do whatever on their phone and they're happy and content. Uh, I also will typically ask them what kind of music they like or don't like 
and I have different genres preloaded on my favorites lists on my radio so I can easily toggle between options. That's a really good idea. And then I don't personally do this, but I know a lot of drivers that offer small bottles of water or mints or candy bars, stuff like that. Hey, it's a tax write-off and it's just another little thing that you can do to stand out from the other drivers, creating a great experience for your passenger and hopefully leading to a big tip for you. All right, number four. This is an easy one as well, peak hours. Get on your phone, lift already has it preloaded it will show you a bar graph for the day for each hour during the day and how busy typically it is in your area during those hours so rule of thumb if you look at that you will see that early mornings and later in the evenings are the most busiest and if you're just starting out driving and you're having a hard time figuring out like when to make money rule of thumb is drive later in the evenings especially Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, guarantee you will have rides and you will make money and you will get tips because people are planning on going out and spending money and you are a part of that experience and what they are budgeting for. So uh, finally, number five, scheduled pickups. I personally love this one the most and here's why. So for one, it's guaranteed, right? So Every night before I'm driving the next morning, I will get on and refresh that scheduled pickup page and I will hopefully find uh, a ride that's at least $10, but obviously the bigger the better. And that will get me going in the morning. So it holds me accountable to get up in the morning and give that ride, get my day started, make some money. And, uh, or if I'm coming off a of lunch, I'll be hanging out, I'll be refreshing that page, looking at the scheduled pickups. Um, just another way to, to keep things going. Side note, if you are a driver, this always cracks me up. The people who schedule pickups that are like $3, I'm like, why, why? And then who, who are the drivers that are picking those? Anyway, that's a side rant. That's my content for this week, you guys. Five ways that you can increase your earnings driving with Lyft. Again, hit those weekly bonuses, know your areas, customer service, peak hours, and scheduled pickups. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, comment below, share the video, subscribe to our channel. We'll keep bringing you great content. And uh, you can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at jacob.letman and letman's really easy it's l-e-t-m-a-n i'll see you on the gram hey this has been another episode of the rideshare hub we'll see you guys next time <laughs>